Hi folks, welcome to Let's Go Car Cruising. My name's Mark and I'm a certified car nut. I go to car shows, cruise nights, cars and coffees, anything with cars and wheels at it, and I get the stories because the stories and the memories are where it's at. Tonight I'm back out at Brimfield Winery in uh, Brimfield, Massachusetts for their uh, weekly Friday night cruise night. I uh, haven't been here for a little while and uh, decided it's about time to come back and uh, see some more cool cars. Thanks for watching the channel, folks. I really appreciate it. Don't forget, click the uh, like, like, subscribe, and uh, ring that notification bell because this weekend I've got some really cool stuff coming up and you'll want to get a notification when I put them up. You won't want to miss them. I guarantee you, you won't want to miss what's coming this weekend. So anyway, we're going to get to it and uh, we're going to have a great time. So uh, what do we say? Let's go car cruising. Here we have a 280Z for my friend Jeff who's got a 240Z. I'll zoom out a little bit. Pretty green little car. And uh, not sure of the year. There's no owner around. But uh, it's a neat little car. A little Nash Metropolitan. And uh, I couldn't fit in one. But it's pretty cool. Nicely done. Inexpensive little commuter car. And a sharp Mustang convertible here. Looks like it's been uh, customized a little bit, but uh, that's cool. Got a four speed in it. Nice, comfortable bucket seats. And the top goes down. Pretty cool. Right alongside another Ford, a uh, big Lincoln. Now talk about a family cruise car. These things are enormous. Nice color combination, kind of like a steely blue-gray, bright lead, red leather interior. Really sweet, super car. So we're here with Charlie, and uh, Charlie's got this really neat little Opal, and. Uh, that's about all I know about it, Charlie. So why don't you tell me? It's a '72 Opal GT. Okay. And I bought it in 1976. Really? Okay. And I've had it since '76, and I bought it from Sterling Ore Cadillac, Cadillac on Mill Street in Springfield, Mass. Okay. And I think I paid thirty-nine hundred dollars for it in 1976. Really? Yeah. So have you driven it that, or has it sat still for a while? I or never drive it in the winter. It, okay. It's always in the garage. Okay. The floors, everything is all original. A couple rod spots in the back of the uh on the rear quarter panel i had a patch put in and stuff. okay but other than that it's original so where were these made in germany they were made in germany okay the body was made in france okay and, and monocroc yeah uh-huh yeah so and they imported them as opals as well they're they're atom opals but they're imported by g because they're owned by gm okay and uh they were imported by buick and sold at buick dealers from the, uh, in the 70s okay and i think they stopped importing them because uh, they they were losing money on them because they're German cars. And right. They, they weren't the the exchange rate was different or something. I like see. That. Okay. So they sure. they stopped importing them, but they still make them. You can still buy them in Germany. They okay. Still have Opals, very big brand over there still. All right. Matter of fact, uh, you know when they came out with the uh, Saturn Sky and the yes, uh, that was also an Opal GT in Europe. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. So. All right, it's cool. pretty cool though. So, have you restored it? At uh, some I have. Point? I have restored it. I. It took me four years to do it. Okay. You know, a buddy of mine. Parts availability? Not good. No. Yeah, I'm okay. afraid. Of, I'm afraid if I lose the windshield, I might be in trouble. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thing, you know, so, certain things you're very cautious with it when you're driving it. You know, don't tailgate or follow too close. Or, sure. Like, just stuff like that. But you get it out, and you've had fun with it for an awful long time. Yeah, I've, it's got a, a little over 100,000 miles on it, and I put on 80,000, and I've owned it to 76, so I don't put a lot of miles on it. Right, Realistically, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I haven't done the math, but it's not a lot of miles. Not a lot of miles. Per year. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for telling me the story about it, because I know a little bit about a little bit, and yeah, uh, uh, I don't know much about that. So uh, <laughs> I learn, and, uh, and I have fun meeting and talking to people, and... Uh, Having a blast. Yeah. So, thanks again for your time well, and uh, for, uh, talking to me. Enjoy cruising the car. Yeah. Thank thanks. you. A 55 Chevy Bel Air convertible. And it's black and it's straight as an arrow. What a sweet car. Got a modern drivetrain in it. Looks 
like a, uh, ooh, 572, big block. Yeah, that's a real, that's some real horsepower. Power brakes. So modern drivetrain, but uh, sweet car. A couple of really nice Chevy coupes. Custom, but uh, really cool. This one, uh, and I'm not sure of the year. Early 50s, I'd say. Early mid 50s. Sweet car. Room for the family. Small block Chevrolet. Power brakes. And another Chevy Coupe. Looks like this one might be a little older. Five windows. But it's still got a back seat. Take the family for an ice cream. Very nicely done dash. Tall automatic shifter on the floor. Sweet car. So not many owners hanging around their cars tonight. It's kind of sunny out. People are hanging in the shade. We got Roy's C6. And we got Art's C3. And we got George's 427 R Code Galaxy convertible. And uh, we got a little International Scout. Got a Chevy pickup. Got a 65 GTO. 79 Corvette and uh, a lime green Barracuda. I think that's Ron's car. Cool stuff here. Again, not many owners around the cars tonight, so uh, interviews are tough to find, but we're trying. All right, folks, we're here with Bob, and uh, I met him several weeks ago, and he escaped without me interviewing him, so uh, he's going to tell us the story behind this cool little Golden Eagle Jeep. So it's a 79. It came from Colorado. It's relatively rust-free. It's ground off. It has a new, not a new, but a uh, 351 Ford in it. Okay. And um, yeah, for the most part, it's it's pretty rock solid. It's not show quality, but it's definitely Bob quality. It's Bob. There you go. It's cruise <laughs> night, and you can go out and have a great time with it. Yep. So, um, what led you to chase after a Jeep? I'm a Jeep guy. Okay. I found my roots again. There you go. I went. I went badass and went to a. Uh, BMW for a few years and that's not <laughs> happening anymore. So I got back into my roots. I've owned about 10 Jeeps, CJs, cool. YJs, TJs. So. so this is this a, I see a stick shift, a standard? Yeah. Okay. It's a four speed, but really it's a, a granny gear. It's, okay. It's a three sure. speed. Awesome. Yeah. And you, you haven't had it that long, right? About seven months now. Okay. Yeah. Found it Just, on the internet? Found it on the internet had it shipped in and just been making it mine from now that's awesome so what have you done to it so far all the details the steering gearbox the, okay um, brake booster the you know um, leaks yeah had leaks to uh, it imagine it's that right yeah, I mean, just, anything just old is things. going to yeah just the little things. it's amazing how little details can make a huge difference in in the drivability of a, of a vehicle yeah, it so. actually drives the best of any Jeep that I've had Cool. Well, thanks for taking the time to say hi, Bob. I appreciate it. And uh, drive the heck out of it. Yeah, Have thanks, fun. We'll man. see you on the road. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> this is Ed's 37. Ed's a local, uh, local friend that uh, joins us at cruise nights. And I think he's hiding over in the shade. So uh, can't really talk to him about it. But it's a cool little hot rod. Nice 37 Ford. Interior is done nicely. All what you need. And a little bit of a back seat. To take the kids out for ice cream. Because who doesn't like ice cream? 
Cool little 37. Got a uh, Super Sport Impala convertible. Custom skirts on it. Nice cruiser. Bucket seats and a console. Oh, small block 283 Chevy. Gets it down the road real nice. Take a look at it. Nicely done. Very presentable car. Nice time. Get a mid late 80s IROC Chevrolet. Nice shiny black, red interior, automatic. Nice car. And a Toyota Supra. Man, those were popular back in the day. Don't know really what year it is, but uh, it's a fun little car. Got a stick shift and a Targa removable top. You don't need to spend a fortune on cars to go out and have a good time, folks. Get yourself one. Got a couple of hot rod Fords. This is, uh, looks like a 32. Roadster with a big block Chevy in it. Yikes. Blower, twin carburetors. And uh, looks like an earlier Model A. Five window coupe. Small block Chevy. Kind of tight quarters for two. That's all you need. Nice interior. And a rumble seat to bring the friends and family with. Cool car. All right, folks, we're going to call a wrap on this one out here at the Brimfield Winery. Uh, a lot of nice cars. Owners uh, missing in action tonight. So uh, we'll try to get back again and uh, talk to some more people, talk to a few people. Uh, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the like button, uh, hit the subscribe button, and ring the notification bell because I got stuff coming up this weekend that you're not going to want to miss. Absolutely outstanding stuff coming this weekend. So. Uh, Hang in there and uh, don't miss it. If you've got a cool car with a great story and uh, you're in the central New England-ish area, leave a message in the uh, comment box and uh, I'll try to get out to those shows. I'm trying to branch out, get to different shows and uh, meet different people, see different cars. So uh, again, thanks for watching. Get out there and cruise your cars, folks. Have a great time, make some memories. The summer is really short up here in New England for us. To, uh, to enjoy them, get out there, enjoy them. And uh, what do we say again? Let's go car cruising.